Hi Booktube, it's Stephanie. So today I'm going to share with you my library haul. Uh, so these are the books that I have out from the library currently. I live in Sweden and our libraries are not closed. They're not. Simple as that. And yeah, let's get started. Oh, and the boxes there, I were like, oh, should I move them? I can't be bothered. But that's a different thing so let's get started with the books that i still have out that i had two months ago when i filmed this last time now before i have started out with the books that i'm currently reading i'm actually not currently reading any library books which worries me but yeah let's get started with the first one that i have i still have out the dragon one share with the uh, by tad williams this is a classical fantasy where a kitchen boy character needs to go and find something to save the kingdom. I might actually return this and then pick it up at a later date, but I still have this out so far. Then I have yet to read The Dragon with a Chocolate Heart by Stephanie Burgess. And this is about a dragon who drinks some enchanted chocolate and gets turned into a dragon. That's all the synopsis. There is on the back. I still want to read it and I still have not read it. And the next one I'm still, I think I'm getting into the mood to read this. So that's actually the number one reason why I haven't returned it. And that's Kiss of Steel by Beck McMaster. This is a steampunk novel and steampunk is kind of like paranormal science fiction kind of basically what if electricity was nothing and people continue to use steam engines and stuff and this the main character is also innocent blah 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 and will obviously save the tortured man who's obviously misunderstood by everyone trashy fun and i do feel like i need something like this because i haven't felt like reading and the next one I still have out is The Atlantis Gene by A.G. Riddle. This is the first book in a, I don't know if it's a trilogy or anything, but it is a part of a series. And this one, basically, um, something is happening and an ancient uh, human danger or, yeah, something is coming to destroy humanity and the persons in charge or that believe that they know best are prepared to sacrifice over 99% of the human population and we are following two characters who are trying to figure out something and might prove something that has to do with the origin of humanity. Yeah, I still want to read this. I'm feeling very repetitive right now but yeah that's happening and then we have the unremembered by peter aurelian this is a the, this is a debut and the author used to work for xbox and people have written that it's very game like and yeah it's about some ancient evil that was trapped behind a uh, trap somewhere and a magical wheel that was kept uh, that kept him in place with the help of song and as time went on people started to view this as just myths and the wheel is failing game opening and yeah i still want to read this and the text is tiny <laughs> i still want to read this and yeah i still want to read this what else to say then let's go to some of the books that I have not <laughs> shared with you last time. Uh, the first one I got because I have a video that I will film after this one. This is The Diamond Throne by David Eddings. I need to get my own copies of these books because I love them. But this is the first book in a trilogy that follows Spearhawk and I love this series. Please read it. Uh, I want to reread it. I prepared for a uh, video that I will film next and I was like, 
I need to read this. I need to reread this. And there is a prompt for the Mid Taker Readathon that has a reread button. I probably will read this for that. I love this series. It's a classical fantasy. It would not. It will technically not give you anything new. But I adore this series and I don't hear anyone talking about this author and it's so sad. Um, now he has been dead for about 10 years so that probably helps. But when I saw, yeah I think I saw this book in uh, Becca and the Books video when she had her entire, uh, when she showed all the books on her TBR. And I immediately wrote, please read that, please read that, please. <laughs> I want people to read about this, but I also understand why. <laughs> it, yeah, they're all, this is written in the late 80s. I get it, but I had all these books and I need to reread all of them. And I have read all his books except for his very first one, but that was not the fantasy one. And I don't think you can get a hold of it either. The next one I have here looks beaten up. This is, well, the English title is The Mystery on the Blue Train by Agatha Christie. And this is the Poirot novel. And this was written in 1928. But this one, this book is almost 30 years old. And you can tell that it's, it, yeah, it was printed in, uh, like, if you bought this yourself, it probably would look kind of better, but whew, this has been through some things. It's a Poirot mystery. I don't know anything else about it. I, yeah, I just picked it up at the library. That's it. And I probably have all, know already the mystery because as a child, I used to, as a child, they're not that old, but I used to watch these uh, on TV with my mom because she has read all of them, I think. I'm already 10 minutes in in this. This is going brilliant. Uh, so the next one I have is All of Finch E.L. Stalin by Jan August. The English title is All of Finch in the Valley of Fire. And this is the first plus in a, in a middle of the way trilogy. And we are following Olo Finch, who has just moved to this valley, uh, to Pine Mountain, Colorado and he attracts to him dark paris or he has already done that and then he there's some other magic at play and he for some reason needs to play a part of it it's a middle grade fantasy kind of shows some one thingy i don't know if it's a shows one to be fair but it feels like it is and i do like this um line in the synopsis and I, I will do a bad, bad translation to English. Um, he has an important role to play. The only issue is to know which parts that leads to the magical places and the ones who lead to danger. I like that line. Um, as I said, bad translation, uh, translation to English, but hey. And yeah, this has been on my TBR for a while. And why not read some middle grade? I haven't done that for a while for some reason. And then I have a conclusion. This is The Sender, Volume 6, The Machine War by Jeff Lemire and Dustin Yugang. Let's just keep that in. And yeah, this is the conclusion to the, the Sender series. And the next series is called The Sender and that's currently ongoing. This is pretty big for being a graphic novel, at least this kind of version of a graphic novel. And yeah, we will see what happens. And especially since it's a conclusion, I'm kind of like, kind of nervous. But yeah, we'll see. And then the, I have a new book. And this is The Unspoken Name by A.K. Lockwood. This is about an a orc pri priestess who were supposed to be honored with the title of sacrifice and from the way it's portrayed is actually a pretty honorable title even though you're dead 
and the day she is supposed to become a sacrifice she gets an opportunity to get out and gets turned into assassin trained and yeah by a wizard and yeah so it follows that orc princess a uh, priestess i have heard good things about it and i'm actually pretty intrigued to what this horn means because it has obviously been broken off what does it mean or if, let's face it it could also be just be an aesthetic thing that they put on the cover so the next book that i have here is the lost city by nina Diel, dielo the uh Leo. Yeah, and this is a following a person called Seho, and in this city that this takes place, there has just been an uprising in a bunch, is in a bunch, <laughs> in murder and crime and abductions, and she needs to help solve it and she has some kind of power and as they go deeper into the city on the world they find out that something way more dangerous is happening and they need to and they get hunted by demons and they need to try to find a way by combining the effort with the criminal mastermind a king and a way that condemned fugitive and save the world Sounds pretty good. I think th this is a standalone, and yeah, I don't know what this is about. Okay, that part was pretty darn cringy, so let's just continue. The next book I have here is A City Dreaming by Daniel Polanski, and this follows a man called M, who is not like the most like heroic character. Um, he lives in New York and. He doesn't care about politics, but in the city there are two queens and they are starting a war and since he doesn't like New York to go the way of Atlantis, as he said in the synopsis, he needs to call in every favor, waste every charm and blow every spell he's ever acquired and he might even have to get out of bed before noon. The city never sleeps, but is always dreaming. I read The Builders by him last year and I really enjoyed it. It felt a little bit fan fiction-y as if um, he, there were a book that had these characters in before and now we kind of like follow off what after that left off. And I would have loved to read that first book because it sounds intriguing because the main character of basically they were portrayed like massively portrayed in the first book and now it's them to take back the power uh, i liked it it wasn't the best thing ever but i really enjoyed the writing style so i'm looking forward to reading this one here i have that book in my january library hall oh well so the next one i have is a book that i had that i dnf'd but i still wanted to continue and that's nice dragons finish last by rachel Ar aaron this is a okay <laughs> we are following a guy him what's his name i do not remember julius um he was he's the smallest dragon in in his um clutch and in his pack i don't know what they call it and his mother decides that he needs to be punished and sends him and locks him into a human body and sends him to a city to find another dragon turned human because she has tried to escape and yeah he hates being human and the city that he has been sent in is ruled by a goddess who despises dragons so if anyone finds out so that if she finds out that he is a dragon he will be hunted out and killed great mother and i got about halfway through and yeah so this is a world where magic all of a sudden turned up and 
these ancient gods claimed their areas and these old dragons woke up. Uh, yeah, this is actually part of a series. I do believe that when I needed to return this to the library, I had gotten almost halfway or two halfway. I don't remember. It's a pretty short one. And I just felt like, let's just finish one up. I didn't like it. Um, uh, but yeah, this might be one of those that this one will more give you the foundation and the next book will give you more like meat, so to speak. But that also makes me feel that since this is 280-ish pages, why wasn't it longer? I felt like that already when I was reading it because I was like, we have barely gotten anything and I'm like almost halfway, meh. But I still like the writing style and the story on its whole was pretty interesting. So we will see what I think. The next book I have here is another one that I have borrowed a couple of times, but just never gotten around to. And that's Sioux City by Lauren Gox. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, she wrote Moxiland, if you have any idea what that book is. But this is uh, set in a world, this is set in Johannesburg. And this takes place in a world where you have animal companions. And we are following a, a character called Cincy, who has a slot on her back. And she's kind of like a private detective or something. But during one of her uh, missions, um, an old lady turn us, turns up dead. I guess that was her employer at the time. So the police confiscates her paycheck and she needs to take on a mission to find a missing person and she hates those kind of missions. I don't know anything else about it except it has pretty good reviews. Most times when I've looked up this author it's Moxeland people mentioning but this one sounds more fun to me. So the last book for today is another middle grade and that is The Beast of Buckingham Palace by David Williams. That's, a, that's difficult <laughs> every single time to <laughs> say. But this is set in the future, in Britain, 100 years in the future, where London is in ruins. And we are following this person called Prince Alfred, who has only known life in Buckingham Palace. But as his mother, the Queen, gets dragged to the Tower of London, he needs to step up to defeat this fearsome beast. Yeah, and then he will also need to save the entire world. It does have this point that I actually thought was pretty interesting. Travel forward in time for a fantastical adventure. A story of myth and legend that will enthrall you your right to its thrilling end. So go back in the future to get the magic. Go back to the future. Well, at least you now know what I have been watching. <sighs> wow. Uh, going forward into the future to be able to get some magic. Pretty good. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this. This has some a lot of illustrations, which I thought just because of that, I accidentally... It has a lot of illustrations. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It looks... It was way bigger than I thought it was going to be. It's over 400 pages, but which... Yeah, over 400 pages. Um, but with all the illustrations, it will probably technically not be that long. And I do like, um, where was it? I just saw it. It has these pages where the text instead is white. And for some reason, I just love those places. And that's some dead men. We will see what I think about this, but I'm looking forward to it. So those are the 15 books that I have out from the library. And I'm not currently reading any of them. Brilliant. And I need to go and collect a book. That's 700 pages. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Did you recognize some of the books and, uh, and you want me to get to them as soon as possible? Please comment down below and I will see you next time. Bye.